بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters, this is Brother Bono Muhammad and I'm your host on this creative journey of Connect the Dots where we're learning about effective communication from the Quran and Sunnah and from my own experience as a professional poet you know, I happen to speak fast I'm just realizing this now as I was doing my intro that sometimes I speak very quickly and this can be a detriment to somebody who perhaps is not as fluent in English, maybe English is their second or third language. It's sometimes difficult for them to keep uh, afloat what I'm trying to say. So I do apologize if anybody's watching this video and I am speaking too fast, but I am hopefully inshallah trying to get everything out of my head because there's so many things in here and I want to get them in there. So inshallah, you won't be upset. Now we're gonna talk about something very important. Now we're actually going to talk about writing poetry. So far, I don't even think we've spoken about putting the pen to the pad. Now we're going to talk about putting the pen on the pad or in this day and age, literally just popping up Microsoft Word because I don't even write on paper anymore. But one of the things that I always teach and is very important, the two most important parts of your poem, really the only parts anybody actually cares about, is the beginning and the end. That's it. You, if you take that point home, you have literally mastered everything I've learned over the last 10 years, okay? People only really pay attention to the beginning and the ending of what it is you say. So it's so important to have a strong beginning have a beginning that will capture someone's attention right off the bat. You have about, I would say, less than 30 seconds to immediately make a positive impression. This is now, we're talking about the fiqh of life. You meet somebody, as soon as you meet them, you only have a little bit of time for them to have a positive impression of you, as in their first impression. Of course, you might be a great person, but if you're not able to sell them on that first boom, you know, you come out the gate swinging, then unfortunately, everything you say after that, they'll just tune out, they'll just go to the back of their heads, they'll just start looking for an excuse to get on their phone and start texting or typing. So you need to, in the first few lines of your poem, automatically capture your audience's attention. How do you do this? A lot of ways. First, you can start off with a joke. That's a great way of starting off any presentation. You know, this appeals by the, this is, this is not just for spoken word poetry, we're talking about just public speaking in general, right? You can start off with a joke, Start off with a story, start off with a powerful statement, a powerful quotation. You know, there's so many things. Check out the booklet. I wrote a whole bunch of them inside that PDF. But there are a lot of things you can do to start off strong. But you have to, in your writing, think about these two areas, the beginning and the end. And the ending, I would even argue, perhaps might be a little bit more important because that's what people are going to be leaving with. The last thing you say is automatically the emotion that they will remember once they actually experience your writing. So these two places, beginning and ending. And the ending for me, it's, it's so important because, like I said, it's the thing that people walk away with. It's also the last opportunity you have to impart upon your argument. Remember we said, writing a poem is like, a, like an essay and your thesis, you need to bang it home to the very end where people are walking away thinking, wow, I agree with that person. And a good poem, a sign of a good poem, is that your audience should know that it's the ending. It should be dramatic enough, there should be enough kind of, you know, build up so that once you end, people are like, yeah, it's over, I know it's over. Why I tell you this, because there's a lot of poets and some poetry out there which awkwardly just stops. Like that, right? You just like, you didn't know I was done, right? You just figured out, gonna keep going. But there are poets who will write a poem and they will just have the weirdest way of ending it. So much so that the audience will just sit there and they're not sure, should they clap? Should they go to the washroom? Should they, did you forget your line? Should they encourage you, right? So your ending should be powerful enough that people know automatically, man, that was a strong ending. And wow, they captured my attention from the very beginning. This poem is solid. What you said in the middle? Ah, who really cares? Nobody's paying attention. I mean, they are paying attention, but not as much as you think. This is now, honestly, I'm telling you from my experience, most people cannot even remember half the lines I say in the middle, but the beginning they remember, the ending they remember, so go with that, beginning and end, inshallah. Another tactic you can employ is thinking about creative ways of saying otherwise non-creative things. So you might, for instance, in your poem, there might be a line or a reference to the fact that you were looking out the window. And you could write in your poem, I was looking out the window, or he or she was looking out the window, right? Or you could flip it up, flip it down, and you could say, 
I realized through my eyes the surprise, the gaze of the windows taught me and blah, 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 I don't know, whatever, right? That was off the top of my dome, you see how I'm rolling? So you could employ any type of creative language, any type of creative thought to say otherwise uninteresting things in an interesting way. This is part of the power of creative license is you're not restricted by particular sets of grammatical or language rules. You can really venture outside of that and really try your best to be creative to the extent where your audience is not only being educated, but they're also being entertained. Entertainment in this particular field is a, it's a huge component, right? That's part of the reason why we do a lot of things when we write. We rhyme, we, I'll get to that later, but there's a lot of grammatical tools and structures that we do use because we want it to be entertaining and fun as well. So not being restricted and thinking about interesting ways of saying things will only increase or heighten your ability to capture your audience's attention, inshallah. You know, one of the things that I find is very depressing is that in English language, in, in the curriculum as, as how we teach it today, uh, children themselves do not know how to free write, how to just be creative off the top of their dome. I've done this exercise in schools before where I'll tell kids, all right, kids, write about anything you want. And when you tell a group of like, you know, 16 year olds to write anything they want, They've been conditioned so much so that they do not even know how to just write anything they want. They'll ask you for a rule, should it be like this? Uh, do I have to talk about this? Does it have to rhyme? Does it have to have this particular structure? And you tell them, no, just write whatever you want. You know, write as long or as short or whatever. And it's, it's actually a skill set, but I would say it's more of a blessing to be able to just express yourself, dude. Just say whatever you want to say. When I started writing poetry, it was a, more about therapy than anything else. It was really a tool that I was using to help get over my own problems. You know, I would be going through things in my own life and I knew that if I wrote it down, if I was able to put my thoughts down on paper, I'd be able to work through it a little bit better. And at the same time, I could, you know, reflect on it and think about it and and even be able to, you know, say things that I couldn't tell other people. And I knew that my paper wasn't going to judge me. I knew that my pen wasn't going to say anything about me. They weren't going to, you know, kind of talk behind my back. And so it was a tool for me to really get things off my chest. But today I find like that creative muscle, and really that's what it is, is a muscle. You have to continually keep using it. For many of us, it's never been exercised properly enough that we have really shabby creative skills. So, you know, don't stick to a structure. Be free. And that's what I'm teaching, particularly in this genre, in this particular style of spoken word poetry. There are no rules, no regulations, other than just be awesome. Be amazing, inshallah. If that's the case, you have no problems. That's it for this video, inshallah. Stay tuned for another Connect the Dots. Jazakallah khair for watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.